In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at editing notes in the MIDI editor. A lot of the edit functions that are available in the MIDI editor are the same as the conventional edit functions you'll find in most programs, such as cut, copy, paste. You'll find them in the edit menu here. You can see they're greyed out at the moment, so they only work if a note is selected, but then they become available here. Cut, Apple X, copy, Apple C, paste, Apple V or if you're on PC that'll be control. They're the standard keyboard shortcuts for those functions and you'll find the same thing in a word processor or photo editor, things like that. And they're pretty self-explanatory. You just select the note and then choose the function. So Apple X to cut or control X on PC and then just paste it wherever you want it to go. It'll only work on the same key track though. You can't copy notes from one key to a different one you can only paste them along that same note. You don't have any control over that. And of course, Apple Z to undo or Control Z on PC. You can also copy notes just by holding the Option key on Mac or the Control key on PC. That's probably an easier way of doing it. But the edit functions like cut, copy and paste might be more useful if you are maybe copying a few notes at a time. So Apple C, maybe if you wanted to paste them down the end here or something like that. But for working with larger sections like phrases or whole sections of notes, it might be useful to use some of these other functions like cut time or paste time because what that'll do is that'll allow you to insert a section. So for example, if we choose it here, now most of the time it's just the same keyboard command but with shift added, so Apple X and shift. Then we can just cut time and that will remove that section and nudge these notes forward. And then we can paste them here if we want to or undo that. You can then insert them in the middle here and it will then nudge them backwards again. So it's really useful for inserting a section in the middle of something else and do that again and you'll notice there wasn't a, a copy version because you can just do copy there and then use paste time so for example if I just do Apple C to copy that and then click here Apple shift V will insert it in the middle there so you don't need a copy time because it's just the same as copy what decides how it is pasted is the paste time function. But you can see we also have duplicate time. It's more or less the same as duplicate, which is fairly self-explanatory. It just creates an exact copy of the note or the time span immediately following. So for example, Apple D to duplicate just creates another copy of those notes that were selected immediately afterwards. But if we do duplicate time, then say select these notes here, Apple Shift D and that will insert them immediately after but it will nudge everything else along so it inserts that little bit of time again. Functions like that can be really useful when editing really long clips for example so that you don't have to go and cut the clips up in the arrangement view or something. It can make it a lot easier to edit with. And there's another function that's similar to that and that's in the create menu and that's insert silence which is Apple I or Control I. And that will allow you to just insert a gap of the length of the selection. So that would just insert a gap there. It's another really useful feature. So it nudges everything else along by that amount. So you kind of have the selection working in a couple of ways. Even though we have these three notes selected at the moment, that also selects the time span that they occupy, which enables you to use some of these time-based edit functions. So even though we've got notes selected, we can insert time because those notes are specifying the time selection that we have selected. Okay, and other than that, you can edit with the mouse, just change the length of notes like this by dragging either end. Obviously, if you drag the left side, then it will change the timing of the note, and make it play sooner or later. So if you extend it that way and then reduce the length that way, then you've basically made the note later. And you can obviously you can drag the note around. If you hold the command key on Mac or Alt key on PC, then drag up and down. You can change the velocity without having to use the velocity editor. 
and likewise if you click on the note first and then press the command key or alt on PC then you can free it from the grid so that it doesn't snap to the grid lines. So that's the same as turning this grid off down here. We're going to have a look at the grid in another tutorial. And you can also move the notes around just by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. That can be a useful way of editing sometimes because it moves one at a time, keeps it quite accurate. And you can also change the length of the notes by holding the shift key and using the left and right arrow keys. And also with the shift key held, if you press up or down, you'll go up or down the octave. So it could be useful to select all the notes, for example, and then shift up or shift down, and that will move the whole lot by one octave. So that, that's something I use quite a lot. So for example, if you're changing presets and you load up a sound that is naturally higher, then you might want to drop down an octave to see how that sounds. Also, if you're going to change the length of the notes that way, then then they're affected by whatever notes follow them. So for example, if you extend them by quite a lot, then they'll butt up to the notes in front of them. And you'll see when we reduce the size that it will have changed all the lengths of the notes. And likewise, if we press left so that they go to the minimum size, then when we extend the size again, they'll all be exactly the same size. So that's a good tip for making notes the same size if you want to do that. And finally, if you right click on the note or any selected notes, you have the option of deactivate notes. And that will mean that you can stop playing those notes without actually deleting them so that you can try out a new pattern and leave the old pattern there. So for example, if we play that, you can't hear anything. Whereas if we undo that, Likewise, we could just deactivate one note at a time. Just in case you wanted to see how that sounds. And of course you can select more than one at a time and do the same thing. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.